Hello and welcome everyone. We are live and we're here with Mark Victor Hansen, the number one selling author in the world, 59 New York Times number one bestsellers, author of books like Chicken Soup for the Soul, One Minute Millionaire, Aladdin Factor, Power of Focus, Ask the Bridge from your dreams, oh, <laughs> there we go. Your, your dreams will get in the right direction to your destiny. So, okay. yeah, and so what we're doing here, and Richest Kids in America, and and like okay. what, 318, you know, total or so, I think uh, now, so, and, and ever expanding and ever growing. And so, but we're excited to be here today. I'm excited to be here today. My name is Preston Weeks. I'm the founder of Formula EQ Academy and uh, I run a company called Operations X, and I have been Mark's business partner and worked with Mark and ran back end operations in his companies for the past long time. And so we are coming here today, though, to bring solutions to you about writing. We're coming here to talk about writing books, discussing how to write books, discussing questions that you might have about you know, what it's like to be an author what it's like to write a book. How do I write a book? What do I do it? What are the resources I need? How do I market it? What should I do with the book? Why should I even write one today? Is it relevant? You know, so we're going to discuss some of those things. And everyone that's watching out there, type in the chats. Go ahead and type in the chats if you have questions, and we will answer your question live. So type in the chat, ask questions, and we'll be monitoring that as we go. And we'll take questions live. And these are questions around anything books, anything authorship, maybe even maybe some business stuff we can throw in there too. So with that, welcome, Mark Victor Hansen. Welcome, Mark. How are you doing today? Great, 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 great. And I'm glad to talk to all of you. And I'm thankful to be with my dear friend, Preston. So everyone's got a story in them. And, and you know, you're born to unfold your story and see all the chapters of your life and then you say, well, sooner or later, you do something great. And you say, well, everybody needs to hear about that. And that's true. So what you want to do is you say, we got three choices. It, 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 you've got to write it no matter what. And you ought to write your biography and autobiography. But if you're going to write to help somebody else, you know, you can do their fiction or nonfiction. Then you can either self-publish. You can hybrid publish, which I we own a company like that called MarkVictorAnsonLibrary.com. We'll talk about. Or you can go to a major house. Now, this last week, I was talking to my dear friend, Brian Tracy, who is a uh, you know, done like 50 books and we've been friends for 40 years and, and no, sorry, 91 books. And he's going to finish the next nine books in the next year. So he'll hit 100. But Brian says all the doors at all the publishing houses are like that. They're shut and locked unless you got an agent to get you in. So that brings you back to the other stuff, all of which works. Self-publishing is what my friend, uh, doctors Ken Blanchard and Spencer Johnson did with One Minute Manager. They printed up uh, 40,000 copies on their little copy machine, sold them. And then went and got a $4 million contract. Uh, I think it was from Simon & Schuster. So you can go from self-published to a uh, publishing house, or you can hybridize it, or you can do it electronically, or you can do an audio. All these things we'll talk about today. We are open, but you have stories that you want to tell, and they share all the time, and they also need to be you know, confined to a book sooner or later, and we'd like to help you get that done. With that, I hand it back to you, Press, and you get to lead the questions, and I will try to lead the charge and answer any questions, because I've been in publishing now 47 years, hard to believe, 318 books, like he said, sold a half billion. We, I love the business. I love the people. I love the industry, and it's going through a lot of changes, and we can talk about all those, too. Yep. No, absolutely. I'm going to say hi to a couple of our people out there. Here's our buddy, uh, Schwa, and so he... Uh, he's the man from St. Lucius, uh, and uh, he he's uh, the he he's uh, our friend who's uh, joined us and, and is watching. We got uh, Dr. Mark uh, Goulston Goulston here. Hello, Dr. Mark. How's it going? We've Mark got first friend of mine. John is a great friend down in the Caribbean. There's Brian. Brian. What's up, Brian? Good to see you, Brian. We've here got with Horatio, and here's a guy who started in the payment business and went from no zero to hero in a very short time. 
So I don't know that we can ever cut people in, but if you want to cut them in, we'd love to have that happen too, Press. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, yeah, no, he's just watching right now. So I don't have a way to bring him in live unless he messaged me. And then Brian, and I can send you a link and you can come join us and chat books. But um, so feel free to do that and I'll watch my cell phone. But uh, yeah, no, we, well, all right. I've got a couple questions. So okay. well, let's see. And one of the questions is that what, so you, you've obviously you've co-written a lot of books, you know, and, and working in collaborative things, but the power of co-writing books what it, it, you it stutters oh, so, just, just oh yeah so what what is the power of co-writing books well the power of co-writing books with jack canfield is that we've sold a half billion books in 254 flavors and we're now i think uh, 254 books and we're in 54 flavors we've done two billion at retail and a billion at licensing because i started us in the licensing business which we sold like 157 million dollars worth of dog food and the licensing is a good thing so let me just tell the triangle you got to have business that you're doing then you want to have marketing and then you do the book that is preferential treatment um so um if you can't write alone you ought to have a co-author and i i'd, I'd written alone a lot of books before jack and i met and jack had written a lot of books jack had written 101 ways bill self steam in the classroom back when he was at harvard and he was third in his class so he was a super smart guy and I'd written um, a couple books, but the big one was Dare to Win, which I'd sold 360,000 copies from the platform, never had a distributor. And I sold uh, 120,000 copies of Future Diary, predominantly from the platform, but I won a one TV show in um, Palm Springs called There is a Way. And I just gave our 800 number in Newport Beach, California, and we got 7,000 calls, 7,000 people buying a $10 book. Back then it cost like 60 cents to ship it out. And it was like amazing because we had $70,000 worth of business from a half hour show. And all I did is go on and talk like I am now. So, and now yeah. the interesting thing, just to segue that fast forward, we're being invited to do, um, and we're talking about it tomorrow with a major, uh, with, in the, when I started, I did infomercials, same as Tony Robbins and, and we've done two major ones, but now there's radio infomercials that are coming on same time podcasts are. So, we think this guy's tested and they've been able to sell 3 million books, not with me, but with somebody else. So it, it looks like the market is morphing and changing and you've got to be, you know, here's the line. Um, survival of the fittest written by Darwin. Everybody thinks he said survival of the fittest. The first line he wrote is the survival of the adaptable, the person that can change and morph and change with the times. And that's what I've been able to do in that. I think I've over answered your question, Preston. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> your answers are always perfect and phenomenal and fun and inspiring. So good. Now, uh, yeah, we've got a question from Shelly. So let's see. Uh, Shelly asks I've heard Mark say you can make a lot more revenue from a fiction book as opposed to a nonfiction book. Could you please expand on that? So great no, question. You, Shelby. Dr. Shelby. Uh, what happened is these guys came to me and they told me that, look, in last year during the height of COVID, uh, the, the nonfiction, which is a business I've been in predominantly, uh, sold uh, 4 billion and fiction books sold 47 billion. So there's about 10,000 to one. And, and people that start buying fiction books are amazing. So at, at a level like Daniel Steele or, or James Clavell or Michener or somebody like that. And I've interviewed all of them um, who were amazing. And then at the level of one time, Crystal and I were in the last four years, we're walking into a hotel and, and uh, it was the romance fiction authors meeting. And some of the people were the strangest looking people I'd ever seen, but you get in the elevator with them and you go, wow, that's interesting. But all of them were making millions and millions of dollars. And I thought, wow, because if you write a fiction book that's sticky, Meaning that, like, like I happen to love Dan Brown as one of the guys in Clive Custer, that you start to read, you go, oh, I want to go to sleep, but oh, I got to find out what happens in the next chapter. Um, <clears throat> that's the kind of books that really make it. So fiction really makes it. And where our company starts is we start always with the title of the book. And I'll, I'll give an example of that. And then we do the cover of the book. And then we do the book. And we ghost write it for most of the people. Like we've just ghost written one for... Uh, they had a Reebok because he he said, well, I want to do my autobiography with your publishing house. And I said, oh, great. And it was Shoemaker, but it was too long. So I said, we've got to go a little shorter. 
people don't know need to know 800 pages about how to make shoes. But I said, tell you what, my wife got this great gift for her last big birthday. And it was, if you want to know if shoes are important to a woman, ask one woman, Cinderella. And he said, so what? I said, so I came up with a title last night. God gave it to me in the middle of the night. And that's how you get your title. Say, God, give me a, a massive best-selling title, a massive best-selling title, a massive best-selling title, and do it 400 times before you go to sleep. You'll wake up in the middle of the night, and you'll have an illumination because you get past the noise and, and the uh, nuisance, and all of a sudden that title will come. Anyhow, it was Cinderella's Sneaker. And because I'm a niche marketer like uh, Joe, who created all of Reebok and, and aerobics and all that, I said, boy, let's do sneakers for people over 50 because everybody else is doing this jocks and the sports guys and God bless them. But let's, let's do the market that nobody's doing. Cause I wrote a book once called grow rich in your niche with the world's top marketer of long copy. And it's just, it's amazing. J Bram. And it's just amazing what you can do if you plan on doing it. And so her question was on co-authorship and I think I've sidetracked too many times, but the answer is everybody out there has got a story they've got to tell but you also have somebody that you can co-author with that has some expertise that maybe you don't like in the jack mark team he is the best inside guy when we submitted a book to our publisher health communication i'm with seven different houses but they never edited a comma because jack just didn't miss he was a latin scholar in high school and a chinese scholar and uh, is one of his degrees at harvard uh but i'm the outside guy i'm the marketing guy the sales guy and the guy, I can figure out, I see markets that absolutely nobody else ever sees. Like we're doing the book uh, with Keith Kruk, who is the guy who helped create a DocuSign that's done $11.2 billion signs. I said, Keith, we're going to do your book. Crystal came up with the title Signature of Trust. But what if we could put at the very bottom of every page, the, the founder and uh, CEO of, Signa, uh, of DocuSign, you know, has written a new book. You, you send out 11 billion of those, you're going to sell some books by accident, even if it's in six or eight pica. Does that make sense? Have I over answered again, Press? No, no, that's good. Yeah. So you're, you're saying to attach it, you mean to put it in their you know, company marketing? Yeah. To put that yeah, they had like, a book. Just like in yeah. the shoes with Reebok, we're going to put a billion advertisements in Reebok shoes. Well, right. a lot of people are going to read it and go, well, that's interesting. I'm glad Joe's doing that, but and chuck it. But some percentage, I don't care if it's one tenth of one percent, one hundredth of one percent. When you're dealing with a billion pair of shoes, you're going to sell a few books. And yeah. it, it, that's called bypass marketing. And that's why I sell more books than anybody because oh, I just go to the bookstores. Well, that was great. But bookstores, thanks to COVID, have gone from 19,000 down to 400. And that breaks my heart because I love those people. And and what I'm saying is, look, they're Here's the line you need to write down. One of my cliches is opportunity is infinite and there's an infinite opportunity for you when you're awake. But you got to be awake and tell yourself there's opportunities. If you say, I'm going to watch uh, Crisis News Network on a full-time basis, pollute my brain to all the negativity of the recession, the depression, hyperinflation, stagflation, inflation, this place, that place. You shut your system down and you'll go like that. I did that one, so I'm real clear. I want to keep going up. So. I implode my mind the best thinking I can do. Absolutely. I'm glad you're smiling. <laughs> no. so, well, you know, you and know. I love it. I love that you brought up the ghostwriting, right? Because some people don't know exactly what ghostwriting is or what that involves or what that entails. And there's a lot of different levels of ghostwriting. But, uh, you know, what ghostwriting is, is someone helping you to tell your story. You know, and some people you know, have some disconnect and they go, oh, I want to write a book or, I don't have the resources or time to write a book. And that's a way that you can do it. That's a way that people can get it done and still share, you know, your story like these people that you're talking about and, and, but have the support team to get it done in a way that it's a pleasure to read and that it's a fantastic production. And it's something that's a high quality piece because it's a lot of time and energy to put in the work too to do a book. And so, which, um, I've got another great question here. So I, I'm going to bring up the next question from Tina. Tina asks, how do you know if your story is worth being written? In other words, how do you know what you write will be a hit with others? So great question, Tina. Tina, with that last name, I've been in Vietnam twice talking in the last four years. So, and they want me, we're doing something again, Press and I. So I, I love Vietnam and the Vietnamese people. And, and by the way, with your same last name, 
Uh, Nathan Wynn is one of my students has made a fortune and we're doing a great thing with Horatio Alger kids. I know I'm off track. I'll answer your question, but uh, we're doing a Horatio Accelerator Summit for the kids that uh, can, because we want to up up in entrepreneurship, which is one of the things I write about. How do you know it's worth being written? First of all, you write it and you read it and you have a few of your friends read it. But then really, we believe one of the 38 things I teach in my book called You Have a Book in You is feedback is a breakfast of champions. And what we did with uh, the book that sold the most for me is 19 million, a first year chicken soup for the teenage soul. And at the time, Time Warner was trying to buy us. And the head of Time Warner is my dear friend now, Larry Kirschbaum. And Larry and I are just sitting at lunch and he says, you know who my daughter is? And I said, no. He said, she's had a Nickelodeon. I said, wow, Nickelodeon is a remarkable writing for teenage soul. Introduce me. So he introduced me to his daughter in California. She let us send out electronically 12,000 copies of the stories. Now, Jack and I had read a thousand stories to find one. We had 250 stories. We thought they're all 10 plus, plus, plus. They moved our heart. We cried. We laughed. We did whatever we we're supposed to with regard to that story. Send it out to the kids and say, look, you scale on a scale of one to 10. And the ones that you think are superstar that you can't help telling somebody because they touch your soul uh, are a 10 plus, plus, plus. So out of 250 that we thought were that, they squished it down to 150. It did so well. Like I said, we sold 19 million out of the shoot because I said the mirror is feedback is a breakfast of feedback is a breakfast of champions. People will cheerfully give you their feedback. Now your best friend or your mom is going to say, no matter what you write, I love it. It's just wonderful. I mean, kiss, kiss. No, no, you need to know. Here's the question you ask, and I'm glad you've asked the right question. If if you like this book, will you give me today's dollars, twenty dollars for this book? If they won't, it's it's assuming they're your ideal market. Like if you're selling a book to women and it's it's a women's book about how to do X, and she is otherwise a buyer, and she buys a lot of books and reads two books a week, and if she'll give you twenty dollars, you're home free. Like on that book we just did with Mitzi Purdue called Rich Widows, I just showed the cover at, at to the lady sixty seven years old who's my friend over at Sprouts that gets me all my vitamins. And Mary said, what have you done lately? I said, here's what we're going to do with our little publishing company, Mark Victor Hansen Library .com. She said, I'll give you 20 bucks for it right now. I said, it wasn't done at the time. It wasn't done. Actually, I said, I'll give it to you free. But I knew that it was a hitter because of the title and the cover. So make sure you got a title that is going to be a mega best selling title because it doesn't cost any more. And that's why we say start with the title and then write the book. And all of the ghost thing that he said, a ghost writer is not an apparition. It's a real person that that has the ability to really write and you need a great editor and you need a great copy editor to make sure the whole book works out. So Tina, I hope I've answered your question. If I haven't, don't hesitate to write us a second backup. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Great answer. So yeah, you've got, you've got to find that. And, and really, you know, yeah, it's, you can find, you can start at the end and, and reverse engineer that and, and, you know, find that piece that connects back into your purpose or your mission or your voice or whatever it is that you're trying to share, you know, really quickly. So, oh, let's see. Um, oh, nice. Uh, uh, Ambreen, our friend says hi here. We've got another uh, LinkedIn user. Oh, here, here's a question. Uh, how do you choose the best self-publishing platform? So, What's what would you say to that? Uh, I've got an answer to that, but uh, you want to answer it? I, I can answer it. We'll both answer it. How's that? Yeah. You want to go first? I'll go second. Well, my I got a short answer, and I'll let you give a long answer. Reach <laughs> the one that has the biggest reach. The one that gives you the biggest reach is the one that is yeah, the, probably one of the best horses to go with. But you, you probably more, there's a lot of complexity. That term reach means. In marketing, marketing is how many do you reach? Like what I said is I hope that we get this put in a billion pair of shoes, you know, when Joe, if Joe's as happy as I think he will be as we finish the book in the next week. So that reaches what is your able, what, what platform do you have to get out to so many people in such an interesting and innovative and creative way? Like we're, re I need to reach real quick, like we were on 50 million diet coke cases for six months and that forced us to be number one with chicken super uh, uh, romantic soul for 58 weeks is amazing. And we're next to a fiction book by our dear friend, Nora Roberts. And she actually sold more than we did. So that back to that first question about fiction. Self-publishing platform. 
there are probably an infinite amount of self-publishing platforms, but uh, Crystal and I were in New York City once and we met the guy who created what's called POD, Print on Demand. Now that is a fast, roughshod book that is, is not hardbound and it's not oversized trade and it's not mass. It just printed fast. And, and it's sort of like when I type something on my computer and then send it to my printer, that's equivalently what POD is. It's, it's like, um, so it, that's how it, it's done. And uh, two majors in this are, are number one is the biggest in the world is Ingram Press. They're in Nashville, but they have 11 presses around the country and they do POD. But right now there is a massive paper shortage. And they told us as of Friday that it could take you eight, eight depends on if you're buying a thousand, they can do it. If you need to do a hundred thousand or a million, you're eight months out of, of pocket before you're going to get anything printed like that because there's supply shortages and the withholds and the political and, uh, inertia in America right now. Um, the other one is is Amazon. But here's the deal about Amazon. Amazon will do POD, but they bring it back to Ingram by and large. Now, they have some POD presses, but not as many as Ingram. Now, then there's a whole other level of printing that you can go to your local neighborhood printer, you can go to your Kinko's, you can do all kinds of stuff like that. And and the first that I did when I was, uh, after I went back from 1973 and four, I, I did a book called Stand Up, Speak Out, Win, and I sold it to little audiences that life insurance, because that's what was my market of talking, to six people, 10 people, 12, never probably more than 50. And Stand Up, Speak Out, Win, I said, this isn't, an international bestseller, not a New York Times bestseller, but it is my bestseller, and I want to sign it to you. The joke that Kevin Robert gave me was they 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 bought the signature and you threw in the book for free, and it's a great book. But the point is, and it's not in print anymore. But the point is, then we went to Kingsport Press. Uh, remember, this is 50 years ago. We bought it for a dollar. I sold it for ten. So essentially, I grossed two hundred thousand dollars, which in a year just selling it from a platform. In addition to getting paid a speaking fee, so I got paid twice and Two hundred thousand then is two million today. So it's it like was serious to come out of being bankrupt to being back on top again and having a new Chrysler Cordoba car with a white Corinthian leather. So it's really like way cool. So self publishing is a way to go. It's a good way. It is a way self starter, but you still better have somebody edit it. You still ought to run it by for the free feedback of breakfast and champions that we talked about a minute ago. Back to you, Press. Yep. Yeah, the great thing I love. You, you know, we, we both love self-publishing. I mean, you've done obviously everything in the world with publishing and multiple you know, companies and multiple avenues, but we love the flexibility of self-publishing, but it is, it's so critical to get the structure correctly, get the editing correctly, make sure it's, you know, formulated and flowing well. And so you've got to have a support team you know, around you to do that, or you've got to have some second eyes, you've got to have you know, different things. There's a lot of different resources that are out there too. So, you know, but if anyone needs resources out there and is looking for resources, you have a few resources, right, Mark? You, you've you done this once or twice. So what I want to share, I'll post it in the comments too, is uh, you can go to hansoninstitute.com yep. and you can find all of Mark's book resources, access to all of Mark's book resources to help you to write your book. So if you're wanting to write a book, if you're wanting to get help to write a book, if you need some pieces in between, you can check out the You Have a Book and You training courses at the HansenInstitute.com. You can check out the Mark Victor Hansen library of resources where they're taking people's visions and sharing that with the world and creating these amazing productions and all these cool things that we're up to, to help people to share their story. So if you want to check it out, check out Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, HansenInstitute.com. And it's in the comments and some of the links in here below. So we've got another question from our friend, Ambreen. So I have a question. What would you recommend an autobiography or novel based on true life, full of adventure, having an element of fantasy fiction. Do you think people will even believe if I shared in the form of an autobiography, or is it better to take the route of writing fiction based on a true story? Great question, Ambreen. We're diving, diving deeper. 
Well, first of all, I think both, but we discern that just like with, you know, Joe at Reebok, we're going to do his nonfiction book, his, his autobiography, because it's important and, and it's something he wants and he wants it for his kids and his grandkids and the rest of people in the industry and the, and the shoe industry is big because there's 8 billion people and I'd say somewhere 80, 90% of them wear shoes in India. They mostly wear sandals in Pakistan and a few places and in the, in the Maldives, but most people wear shoes. So then, but we're doing a fiction book because that will way outsell the other. So I would say that you should absolutely do both. And here's the other thing that we're teaching. One of those 38 principles I teach is that once you start writing and your mind wakes up to writing, you can't stop. It's so exciting because, you know, I say you, you want to do something. And if it's really a hit, then you don't want to be a one book wonder, a one record wonder. You want to, and everyone's got a book in him or her, but the, you want to be able to do sequels, the past, and prequels. And Jack and I used to do the joke when we were together for 20 years. We were writing so many chicken books so fast. We went from one a year to two a year to four a year to ultimately 12 a year, which was, oh, my gosh, that was a lot of books. And, and you know, we're selling books, and we said somebody will be like Sylvester Stallone. Have you seen the movie Rocky, which was done by my friend Peter Guber? And I've met Sly a couple of times, but as Sly... You know, his line to Adrian, Adrian, give me my cane. I'm doing Rocky 412, right? The, the point is, and he's coming out with Rocky 6 here shortly. So the, the point is you want to do something you can sequel and prequel and do the equivalent of like right above my head here is the red book is, you know, Chicken Soup for the Women's Soul, which is another monster bestseller because we hit a market at the exact right time. So you want to know what the trends are, what the evolution of the consciousness of the people is, and then be do like um in horatio we have you know the world's greatest hockey player and he says i go where the hockey puck's going not where it's been that's what you gotta do is let's go where the book business is going and and i think every you're exactly right on you ought to write you look young to me so i'm going to say and if you've had a life full of adventure absolutely write it and i'll just hit on that i'll lick when bob Allen and i were doing one minute millionaire which looks like this which we sold 3.6 million of, and it's a unique because two books in one. But we were reading our fiction friend, Michael Crichton, and we both had read everything. And then he wrote a book called Travels, and he said he climbed Kilimanjaro. So we said we'd do that. And then once we'd done that and got into mountain climbing, somebody said, would you come down and open up all the pyramids in Guatemala? Long story, but then we wrote about that and got into National Geographic. And it was just, it's great fun because once you open up to adventure, adventure opens up to you. And that's why Guys like Mark Twain are such an interesting read, and guys like Ernest Hemingway are an interesting read because they've been there, done that, have that. And same with Michael Crichton, who I think is the pencil and the writer, who's a medical doctor from Harvard, of course. Just He really did things. He went places and, and took risks and had a good time doing it and then shared that with the whole world uh, through his pen and through his prose and through his typewriter. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, I love, you know, the, that distinction, you know, to go, okay, if you're going to do a book, I, you look at the value, right? So if you're going to do a biographical, autobiographical book, um, you know, is it a legacy piece? What's the function of it? Are you a person that's of extreme notoriety where people are going to read that like a Steve Jobs? That's a different scenario, right? Or are you someone who doesn't have extreme notoriety? And, and people are going to get attached to the story. And that's where that power comes in with, you know, utilizing fiction, you know, in a bridge to say like a, a story based off of truth. And then when you have that too, it makes for a more exciting podcast interview because they want to find out which parts are real and which parts are not, right? <laughs> if you write it as a fiction. So What Press is saying there is you got to make sure who is your ultimate reader going to be? And if it's just for you and your family, your autobiography, that's one level. Steve Jobs, which had his, his autobiography, is written by the guy I consider the penultimate of biographers, which is Isaac, um, not to that, Walter Isaacson. And, and Walter's done such a super job. I mean, he did, I just got his one of his books that, because uh, he did one on Henry Kissinger, and he taught me so much about Dr. Kissinger, who I've met in, and is a colleague in Horatio. But, he did kiss. Well, anyhow, he's done like fifty uh, biographies, and and they're all 
mind expanding. And then I've just finished a biography, but I watched all of his master trainings, which I recommend that to you guys, if you've got it, or you can just go on YouTube and watch everything, Walter, every interview he's done with uh, Rose or anybody because they're brilliant. And, and the guy's, you know, he's down in Louisiana. He's a teacher at Tulane, but somehow he writes these great things. Now, I predicted once I'd read every one of the biographies that Walter Isaacson had written, my wife said, well, what do you think he's going to do next? I said, there's only one book to do next. And she said, how do you know? I said, look at the formula. The guy says the most famous guy at the time. I said, well, who are you saying? I said, Elon Musk. And who is he traveling with for one year? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And I'm sure some publisher gave him probably four million. I'm guessing. I don't, I've never met Walter. I want to. He is on my list. For those of you who read my book, Future Diary, I said, you know, I have a constant list of 200 people you want to spend time with, play with, grow with, expand with, trade with, and have an exciting life. Because you're this shot through, you're in the university of life, you only got one shot. This isn't a dress rehearsal, so let's make it wonderful. And, and that's why I think everybody's got to write their book so they meet who they really are, right? Because it just, you make your being up. And that's why, you know, and press I, Wrong with Mitch Purdue's, you know, a little strong. Sorry, I thought I had that right cover on there. I got it here. <laughs> there, I got you. Got you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I see. It's two books down here. Yeah. Now I'll be up and down time because back to what I was saying about trends. Right now, people are we're in an economy that goes like this. So many people are unemployed. COVID has hit a lot of us at, at different times, and you know, and we want to get out of it. And some people are being really negative in the news, saying we'll never come out of this, and Humma, humma. So you need to know how to be up and down times. There's one back over Press's right shoulder if you're looking at him in the right direction. I can see it. Yeah, no, I, had, I, I had one here. I got it here. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a great book and it sells well and everyone loves it. So, you know, but we thought it was a great title and, and we wrote it on the telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, we, first question was about co authorship. I loved co authoring with Preston and, and Mitzi Purdue, who, you know, she, she only does 22 million chickens a week. So, if you're every hungry, you, you can get a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, I have another question. Let me find it here. I have a couple questions. Um, let's see. Here's an interesting one. How do you find the right ghostwriter and editor? And, and this is a good question because there's a lot of... Um, people that are not that great, right? So we, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, let's go to editors because all of us, if you were in high school in America and she may not have been, you may have been in Vietnam and I've certainly been there because the re I was in, in Vietnam the first time because our university, Southern Law University, my first of three alma maters taught teachers to teach. So I certainly was everywhere in Vietnam and have been back again now, again and again, but, and love it, as I've said. But the, the point is they used to bleed on my papers and I didn't like that. So what you want to do is have somebody fix it, but not do it in bright red that scares you and it flows down the sheet. So good editors in the book business are omni all available right now because the book industry is contracted so much. So you can type in what are the best editors in your city or your state or your county, and you're going to be amazed how many there are. And they're not terribly expensive. I mean, not terribly expensive, maybe couple hundred dollars a day to go through your book and, and depends on how many pages, whether it's 25,000 a short, what we call mini book today, or it's an average book, 80,000, or it's going to be a tome of 150,000 like Walter Isaacson's, um, you know, they will edit it and a really good editor. I'm finishing the second part of the question. First, when I was at, when we did one minute millionaire, I was amazed. We had this wonderful Italian editor and she was so, she could see stuff. Bob and I couldn't see because we'd written the book and done a good job and had it looked at even by a brilliant man named Marshall Thurber, who's also a student of both minstrel fullers like myself. But mm -hmm. this woman said, on page 382, paragraph three, needs to be on page 186, paragraph two. And I went, how do you do that? Because, I mean, she literally could hold blocks of copy in her head at levels I didn't know. I mean, I'd gladly have her do it any time, uh, edit. Now, as for a ghostwriter, um, if you, if you want to get in touch with us, we got more ghostwriters, I think, in my company right now operating. I think we got 59 ghostwriters, and, and we put the right ghost with the right story. Um, so you can type in, it says text precedent at that number. 
um, and then we will go out of our way to help you if we can. And if we can't, um, you could go online and, and type in ghost writers in your city. But I would ask you to make sure that you've got a ghost that two things. Number one, you read him or her before you let them touch your work. Yep. Because you got to make sure that you're copacetic, that you're in alignment, that you coalesce, that you are, are comfortable. That's number one. Number two is back to the other question about mastermind or um, co-authors. If you really decide I'm going to be a writer and you start to think about it, you will start to bump into people that want to write with you. And I'll just I'll just give the example of of this one minute millionaire. We're making so much money with with um, my favorite earlier books. It is a 20th anniversary issue, which is a story about how to find the love of your life. So that's why I keep recommending it. But um, I'm having big parties. I could never get invited to a Hollywood party. So I said, well, no one's going to invite me. I'll have one. And we invited, had 500 people, a lot of celebrities came. And we had um, everybody come and perform for us. Uh, but the Shirelles came and performed. And their gift to me was the Temptations. And I thought, wow, this is like, Way cool. I mean, I just, I love big parties. So and we had a lot of fun. But Bob Allen and his wife, Daryl, came and he was going to write the One Minute Millionaire book. And he said, uh, I want you to write the forward. Well, that he said that the night of the party. Well, the next day I'm flying out to go talk up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I'm sitting in first class and playing. All of a sudden, in comes Bob, sits down next to me. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I asked your secretary, where are you flying longest? So I drove up from San Diego to L.A. And I'm sitting with you. I'm going to tell you that we're going to write this book together. I said, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to read how you make a million in a minute. I didn't, cause I haven't done that. I made millions, but I haven't made a million in a minute. So, and, and so ends up long story short, we decided to write together and got paid exceedingly well. And then it turned into a company that we made a hundred million dollars with called enlightened millionaire Institute, where we had 387, 97 employees uh, working with us and three of us owned it. And it was great fun because the book thing is, as um, our earliest question said, is an adventure. It is an excitement. It wakes up everything in your beingness. Because once you decide to do that book and have that title and know you're going in that direction, you'll wake up in the middle of the night with ideas. My recommendation is that you get out of bed and go write it, type it, or dictate it into you know your uh, smart device so you can just keep on moseying down the road and, and accomplish stuff that you didn't even know you could accomplish. More you have in more in you than you even know, and until you start to write, it won't pour out. You can't pour out. Once you start to write, you go. Phew. Once in a while, I read the stuff. Of, I'm I'm really busy writing a, a a book all by myself right now. We finished the biography on Reverend Ike, and uh, it is amazing to me the stuff I, I I know this much, and I'm trying to consolidate it into a little book. So you, that's why books are so cool because you literally get the wisdom of the ages, whether we're reading William Shakespeare or Walter or me or somebody else. It just, it, it's so exciting. And I saw early in here uh, that we had Dr. Mark Goulson, who's a great psychiatrist friend that we've been together. A lot of times we're in metal together. It just, it's so much fun. He is a superb writer. He is also a superb podcaster friend, and, and he's trying to help uh, get all kids out of committing suicide because we have like 3,000 suicides a day, which is a tragedy of monumental uh, import because kids just at, that are killing themselves don't know as far as I'm concerned. He and I have talked about it and he may have a different conversation than now if he's still on, but uh, they don't know who they really are yet because they haven't written down who am I, where do I want to go, what do I want to be, what do I want to do, and what are my master talents? What is my destiny code like we wrote in, in our, Crystal and I did this wonderful book called Ask, and we said you're born with a destiny and you're coded at birth, but part of it is to write your own book as far as I'm concerned. So there you go. Yep. No, I love it. I love it. All right. We've got some comments here from a uh, Roseanne Higgins. She, she uh, was a part, right. She wrote a recommendation on chicken soup for the couple soul. So she's a matchmaker here. Hi, Roseanne. Good to see you. And uh, let's see, we've got Gary, Mark, you inspire the world. Keep the story going legacy. That's what that's what books are, right? You know, books are a legacy. You know, that's what's so cool about books is when you write a book, you are leaving that legacy that's to exist beyond you, to go further, to do something more than you know what you're up to in life. And so it's that. Yeah. By the way, 
when you die, and I've done a few funerals lately for doing people done their eulogies, at least by video, if not physically, is it, it, it says your name, your age, and then the first thing they write after is what your book is. But the legacy is you're remembered more for your book than they never say he is a millionaire, she's a billionaire, right? So that's that part. And then the matchmaker thing is so cool. I hope she's written a book because, uh, Roseanne, because it is, everybody needs to have a book. I think everybody needs to be uh, made it up. And, and uh, you know, when I, after I got through a painful, expensive divorce, I wrote down 267 things I needed in my ideal woman. And I wrote all of them down, all the kinds of stuff you have, that she had to be wonderful. She had to be a superb conversationalist, had to be radiantly beautiful, um, had to be magnanimous, have to have her own money. Uh, to love me and love my friends, and if we both had kids, she'd love my kids, I'd love her kids, all that kind of stuff. So I love this thing about a matchmaker because right now there are somewhere over 4 billion people without a soulmate, and then I'm blessed to have a, a twin soul, which means you put two candles together and it jumps four to eight fold. It's called an exponential growth, but, but twin flame, sorry, and we're twin flame. So I just, and I don't think anyone's ever written to that. So. Roseanne, I uh, cheer you on to write to that if that's your strength, because everybody should be pair bonded with somebody that they love, like, trust, admire, and can grow and glow with. Yep. No, exactly. So um, for just as we, something you had mentioned, I wanted to point out real quick for everyone watching, for anyone who's looking for resources and needs some help or maybe wants to talk to Mark about helping them or something, you can text me right now, that number right here on the screen, 321-421-5213. So it's 321-421-5213. And you text Preston, text the name Preston, and I will respond to you later, eventually, when I get out of business meetings and things. And I'll say, hi, who are you? And you'll tell me who you are, and I'll ask how, how we can help you, and we'll coordinate, and we'll talk. So that's an access point. So text Pressed into three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one, three. And now I have another question from someone, but I'm going to let him ask it himself because he was writing in the chat and then we had a backside uh, text going on and I sent him the link. And so he's joined us here. So welcome, Brian. And uh, you got to unmute your mic. I think that. What's happening, guys? What's hey, up? Where, How are you doing? I'm, this guy I'm, uh, just, just got out of work and uh, hanging out with you guys. Well, awesome. Before you go to, would you say, what were you doing four years ago, if you don't mind sharing? So four years ago, I was employed uh, by a company, and you know, spent most of my life as a as an employee of different companies. And then uh, four years ago, well, actually, it's four years, a month, and a handful of days ago, decided to uh, jump out on my own and become an entrepreneur. And what kind of company are you running? Uh, the pavement group is a national asphalt and concrete company that serves uh, most of the largest brands that anybody watching this or listening to it would visit. So whether it's gas stations, banks, uh, retailers, logistics companies, stuff like that, uh, anybody, any name that you recognize, there's a high likelihood that we've, uh, we're working with them or have worked with them. So Preston, I had breakfast with him. He was in town. And, and, and uh, I've been twisting his arm to do a book, of course, with us, because I think the absolute world of Brian and his wife and his kids and his family. But we're at breakfast and I said, wow, tell me what it is that you do different, that you get more pavement business out of Amazon and Walmart and Costco than anybody else. And we're sitting at the best hotel here in Scottsdale. And you said you use a drone to fly over. Would you? Is that too much intellectual property to share on this no, no, we, we leverage technology everywhere that we can uh, to essentially allow people that are anywhere in the world, really. Uh, for, for us, most of our customers are just in another part of the country, uh, but we utilize technology at every twist and turn that we possibly can uh, to allow us to bring those people from wherever they are uh, around the world or around the country to those parking lots or to those sidewalks or to wherever we're trying to do work and repair things. Uh, to bring it real time. And so whether that's deploying drones to get better details uh, on their parking lots or the issues that exist and creating kind of an inventory of issues that that exist on their parking lots and being able to deliver that to them so that they can see it from the comfort of their own office without ever having to walk that parking lot in person. And it, awesome. by the way, it, it is a fail play 
system. So I said, man, you need to write even a mini book on this, Brian, just because I'd never heard the idea. Press loved the idea. And it was so cool because somebody goes into a parking lot at like, I won't name the hotel because it was a great hotel and they, they're probably, I don't want to get sued or anything, but he said, if somebody goes on trips, you know, they get sued for a million dollars and it's their fault. Whereas he sends his drone around and says, look, we could fix that and we can fix it for this cost at this time and do it that way. What I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there, because I'm so keen on entrepreneurship, an entrepreneur finds a problem, fixes it, scales it, makes a vast profit. That's what this guy's done. And I, I, I am in high admiration because you can see that he's 412 years old and doing so well. <laughs> well, here, this is perfect timing for Brian's question then. I, do you still remember your question or do you want me to pull it up on the screen, the question you asked? I do, man. I do. Yeah. My question was, you know, over, over the years of you doing this, Mark, what results have you seen uh, on the business? So like somebody like myself who writes a book like you're describing, what is the impact on those businesses from a revenue standpoint and attention standpoint, uh, marketing and branding standpoint of those books? First of all, uh, writing a book makes you an author and the authority. So you get to go forward. The impact on the business, uh, writing One Minute Millionaire, I could never have predicted. I knew that it would be a great book because everybody wants to make money. And it was a downturn in the economy when it came out. And and we, out, we sold more than Amazon has ever sold at one time. And I'll go their story second. But that became a business called the Enlightened Millionaire Institute because everyone read the book. And, and uh, we, if they send us a note, we invited them. And we had 4,000 people a week and come 40 weekends a year. And we did $100 million a year. So for me personally, that was an enormous business. And the side part of it is people come to me and say, would I be on the board of directors? Would I you know, advise them marketing-wise? Would I take a success fee? So the ancillary stuff, which you're the best schematic drawer I've ever seen. He even drew a schematic for my business, sort of like his business, which because he also owns a consulting firm where he consults everybody in the pavement business, which I thought, what a cool idea, because I teach you got to grow rich in your niche. But once you do, look at it in a niche, you want to say, how do I broadband this? How do I expand it? So not to absorb my time, but to use all my talents, because Think and Grow Rich says think and grow rich, not work and grow rich. Not effort and grow rich, but think. And this guy's and Preston are both great monster, good thinkers. And I'm very thankful that I get to hang out with all these young guys. And um, I'll just do a quick aside, Matt. You know, it used to be that I would hang out with guys, Cabot Robert and Zig Ziglar and all the top speakers in the world. And then ultimately I ended up flipping it and I was hiring them. And I thought, wow, that is interesting. Now all these young guys that someday – are, are uh, you know, using my stuff. Like you met Nathan Wynn when we were in Washington, D.C. at the Horatio Algier meetings. And now we're doing this big meeting at uh, here on May 27th. So it's it's amazing how it flips. You teach and then you get to be taught is how I see it. And is that was that a linear enough answer for you, Brian, or not? Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. And that's that's pretty much what I expected. It's uh, it's incredible what these types of authority pieces can do for people. Right. And you know, as you become better known, whether it's through books, marketing, uh, consistency in marketing, digital marketing, all those kinds of things, um, you know, where it, where it also flips is that uh, when you're young in your career, for me, I had to go chase everybody, right? And then eventually when you get enough authority and you get enough expertise, uh, people, that starts to flip around, right? Where you don't have to go chase everybody. Sometimes they start chasing you. Yeah, and you that's are- exactly the, you know, the key of it is, you know, positioning yourself as a leader and writing a book is literally one of the fastest ways to position yourself as a leader because in, and you get almost a credibility of, you know, a PhD or a doctorate in, in a certain zone sometimes by publishing. And, and because of that, it's, well, the reason why is because you're sharing what you know and it's out there and you can't take it back. And so people can align with you or they can disalign with you, but it's out there and you know, and so they can accept that. And and then you become the expert. So you position yourself as the expert and then you can use that book to create the associative thinking to brand recognition, product recognition, and those types of things that create that deeper connection with the client. And then you can use the book as a leverage piece, like Mark was saying, to expand the business, to expand the product offering, to expand the revenue streams that come into it using the book as a foundation, basically, for all that to happen. So, and everybody awesome. needs to have multiple sources of income, especially in uncertain times. And I think we're going into more uncertain times. I, I, the question that pops into my 
had Brian, when we were having dinner in, in Washington, D.C., I brought over Nathan Wynn, who is a guy who heard me when he was getting a Horatio Alger scholarship, of which we've given 35,000 academic scholarships, 12,000 technical. And now, thanks to him, we've started this new thing, Horatio um, Accelerator Summit, which we'll have here at my house in a couple of days. And, and we've uh, sorted out the 15 best students with great ideas, sort of like the Peel Teal method. What did you hear him say because he went from zero to hero sort of like you did you remember anything that he said when he was talking just to our table with the who's who of the world yeah just just incredible man his uh his mind was opened by conversation with you and you know he just started to think bigger and take action on the things that were out in front of him that he had ideas on and it really is you know for for people listening it really is that simple i mean if i go back in my own story you know four years and change ago I, I pretty much said to myself, it's now or never, right? I've got an opportunity to jump and uh, and I jumped at it. Nathan did the same exact thing and just continued to learn and network and connect with the right people and make the right moves. And, um, you know, we, we call them, we call them the power moves, right? Where you, you do the right things and you do those things that other people are doing that have proven success. Uh, and most of the time you're going to create your own channel and follow it. And Nathan's done exactly that. Yeah. Totally correct. Any other question? You've awesome. got, yeah, Brian? you have any other questions while you're here, Brian? No, man. When do we get to hang out again? That's my only other question. Let's do it. Let's do it right away. <laughs> Come back and visit before it gets too hot and let's go golfing. Let's, yeah. let's do it, man. I got to get out there again here uh, shortly. So I'll let you guys know when I'm coming. I got to get out to California. So I'll stop by. Uh, on okay, my trip good. Out. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for asking your question. Awesome, Amazing question. Appreciate you as always, brother. Take care. Appreciate it, man. Talk Sorry, cut him off. Fun. I get hurt. <laughs> but um, all right. But, so, authorship does, ladies and gentlemen. Press will agree. We get to meet people you couldn't meet any other way. You just there's no way I could go in. Let me just do one of the crazy stories. I, I I'm, we're selling Ask, and I go on a radio show in Vietnam to 10 million people with an American that lives there forever and married to a Vietnamese lady. The next day, I get called by the guy who runs Rockstar Radio. Uh, uh, Ken Rutowski, and, and my phone rings. And I always take his call because I've been on his show a lot, 50 times, I think. And he says, look, the biggest guy in the airline business needs to talk to you now. And his, his name's Leslie si Simmons, who I never met before. And then we were horseback riding down here in Arizona a couple of days ago, months ago, sorry. And But he listened to the story, the podcast in Vietnam in London, calls this guy and says, I can't know how to get to Mark. Ken, you're Mark's friend. I've heard you say it just call mark and immediately we all did business it's amazing it just it ladies and gentlemen there's no better outreach there's no better spider web there's no more creative way to get out than you create a book and then the book recreates you in a look i came out of a blue collar city where my parents were danish quasi illiterate people not that they were not smart but they grew up speaking danish came out of the war world war ii went through the depression there's no esl english as a second language so to think that i would grow up and be the world's best-selling author is zero but i kept reading the self-help books loving them then saying i learned this then i go out and practice it did it and then you know i i would run in industries and, and take over that thing i just said grow rich and niche like i there was at one time there was nobody in the life insurance business that didn't know me and then bob proctor and i he just passed away we did his funeral but you know we partnered up because he and i would take companies and, and tenfold them. It was just amazing because we knew how to do it. And then we wrote books on that and just, we loved every minute of it and they bought everything that we did. And it was just a joy. For me, this has been a joy. I love writing, I love thinking, I love creating, I love helping you. That is a, a joy to my heart. So if it worked, Preston well, uh, gave we, our, his number earlier, so. Yeah, we've got, we've got some amazing, you know, things. And I think we're helping people right now. Well, so one, one of the people we're actually helping. So it, Doug is listening. What's up, Doug? How are you doing? Doug's working on his second book. He's doing amazing things. Doug is a rock star. And so uh, we're working with Doug to get his vision out there. Yeah, take it. You got something. Yeah, to First of all, we had dinner with Doug Wing a little bit ago here and had a great time. And he and his dad and his brother created this company called a ladder company. Now a ladder, you think little ladder, giant, ladder. little giant ladders, little giant ladders. And he just wrote a book, which I've got sitting on my desk, the giant success. That was his first book. 
write the autographs to Crystal and I to keep on climbing. And I thought that was a great line, just so you know, because I haven't had time to call him and now suddenly he's on here. But all of a sudden, because we're doing this thing where we want to do the inserts in the shoes, I don't know if we can go back in your company, Doug, and I probably shouldn't be doing this publicly, but because you sell more ladders and you sell ladders on QC, QVC and Home Shopping and all those places, I mean, the biggest ladder company in America, what if we put an order form for every one of your books? This is what my vision was last night. I had no idea you'd be on the phone today. I plan on calling you later today. But the same thing, we order, you know, your two books. We'll do a, a double book package. It just is amazing. And then we'll also invite him to a seminar where you do it alone or you do it with press and I or however that works out. I can't tell you what will happen. But ladies and gentlemen, that goes along with what Brian Hess was just saying about how do you out start to picture this stuff? I could never have, have guessed that I was going to have the, some of the biggest audiences in the world and be close friends with guys like Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and, and all the current giants, John Maxwell. All of us are pals. But I wouldn't know any of them if I hadn't written books. I'd, I'd be popularly unknown. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's amazing. That's one thing I really want to bring emphasis to as we talk here is, you know, a lot of people want to write books and it's like, oh, who am I? What's my story? Why do I matter? Like, these are the things I hear all the time when I go to meet with some of our authors or people that are trying to you know, discuss these ideas. And, but you were a, a nobody. I mean, you know, I like you're, you were someone who, uh, as far as statistics and odds of exposure and the chance of you being what zero. you became are zero. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's like statistics, blah, million decimal points, zero, you know, <laughs> behind it, but you did it because you had a vision and dream and you stuck with it. And you, and that's, that's the power of, what mark teaches so that's the power of inspiration that he teaches his genius behind it and the vision behind creating a book is that you can do it out there listener you can go do it because someone else has to be the next best-selling author so it, it's a it's a mantle it's a position that's waiting for you it's waiting for the next best story to be told because stories will constantly be read. That's not going to be, uh, people love entertainment, consumption, information. And so that's not going away. And so, you know, do it. We can do it. You've got the power to do it. So Mark, you've inspired someone. One of our, one of our listeners already, Roseanne says, I commit right here. Roseanne, I got, this is being recorded. So like, you're so committed now. <laughs> this is, this is like a, a uh, step three or something or four on goal setting, right? To share, you know, publicly your goals, but to write a book on how to choose the right one from 28 years of matchmaking, private one-on-one, -on -one, romance, head hunting, and amazing adventures and things. Uh, Roseanne's got it. I, I know Roseanne uh, personally, and she's got all the experience and all the stories to do that. And I think that would be a phenomenal book. So you committed. So Hooray for you. That is awesome to do that. So well, I love your it. operational title may be Romance Headhunting. I don't think that book's ever been written. And it, it just, and it, it's so good because we're in the first time where I really think everybody does have on the planet Earth, which is spherical, uh, somewhere their uh, soulmate. And my, that's my assumption. Out of 4 billion people, you got four, 8 billion people, 4 billion men, 4 billion women, there's some person that you will resonate with and for the first time ever because of communication now especially with starlink that elon musk has got <clears throat> cell phones computerization and and if you can figure out the right uh demographic psychographics uh uh geographics by the way that's it romance graphics wow what a con because everybody look i'm friends with willie nelson and all the great singers like that and and you know uh David Foster is a dear friend we were just with. Um, it, the, the point is, they write the greatest love songs ever because everybody wants, everyone has a place in their heart that they want to have love and romance. And, and um, it just, so good on you. Romance matchmaking is even a, not a bad title, but headhunting for romance is a cute title. It just, you know, you'll get a bunch of subordinates that want to work with you with that title. So maybe you want to do more than one title. That's why I say you got a sequel and prequel everything. 
<laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, Roseanne, text me if you want to talk more about that later. But yeah, so we, we've hit an hour now. Oh, let's see. We got one comment from Doug. I've been speaking four times in Utah this week. It's been an amazing time in my life. That's awesome because the great share. Congratulations, Thank you, Doug. Doug. And that's the point is that once he got the book out, you know, and I endorsed it and it just, it, it, and you know, I just want everybody to have a more full, dynamic, lovable, joyous, expansive life. You are here to fulfill your soul, mind, body, and, and uh, self-realize. And the only, I, I don't think there's a better, faster way than you learn how to write first about yourself, your story, and then expand it so you can help somebody else make their story better because we're here to serve the most or the many. Yeah, and, and Doug's a great example. You know, someone who's had an incredibly successful life and he wants to go keep helping people. He wants to go keep sharing a message. Message, And so, you know, he by himself, you know, needs a platform, something to speak about, right? So that's what the book is. The book is, you know, the topic. It's like, okay, here's who I am. Here's what I represent. And they know. So those four speaking engagements he's got, those people that hired him, they saw the book. They saw the message, they saw the understanding, and they know who he is and the type of guy he is and what he's done in his life. And so they put that together and they go, bam, we want to hire you as a speaker. We want you to come and you know share your message or whatever it is. And it creates the opportunity to share your voice, to expand your message, to reach the world, to change the world, to do something bigger than yourself. So I think that pretty much wraps up for today. Any last words, Mark, that you want to um, share with the listeners here? Tonight, I want you all to go to bed and, and really go deep in your consciousness and say, what is the magnificent story that I can masterfully tell that I can put into a book? What is the magnificent story that I can masterfully tell that I should put into a book? Or that's one level. The other level, because we were asked the question again and again about ghosts, who is the best place I can go to co-author or who is the best publisher that I should work with right now? Or how can I manifest myself in, in book form? Because that exists. It's waiting for you at levels you never even thought you could do. And Preston and I are giving you a hundred percent permission to go become the author of your heart's desire. I love it. And so it's, programming your mind that's the, the thought command to program your mind tonight so do that and I, i'm going to do a plug for myself here you know, i'm all about programming the mind and so i have an academy called formula eq.com where we gather and meet together as a community to teach mindset positive principles on how you can advance your life and uh, support tools and things to basically make you the most powerful person in the world. So if you want to learn that, check out formulaeq.com. Check out the academy where we're teaching people the foundation of you, the most important asset in your life yourself. We're supporting that and we're building the strength of that so that you can show up and be and do anything that you want in your life. So I highly, highly recommend checking out Formula EQ. And the best way we've got a question, what's the best way to get a hold of Mark? So you can go to hansoninstitute.com and there's some different resources bookings some different links some email um, links so you can you can do that uh, to find him there you can also text if someone actually if you want to write a book if you want to find a you know help or support or resources and you can't find it on the on the website text Preston, text the word Preston, my first name, to 3214215213. And um, you'll get my digital business card. You'll get access to me. I'll reach out to you and I'll connect with you and we'll figure out what resources you need so that we can support you because that's what Mark's here to do. That's what I'm here to do. We gathered here today for free to help you. And so whether, whether we work with you or not, it doesn't matter. What's important is that you share your message. Because without people sharing their message, the world stops. Progression stops. Information needs to be shared. And your voice is special. Your story matters. It's important. And you will connect with people that are different than I'll connect with. They're different than Mark will connect with. And your story will go on to change the world and change future generations to be better and not be worse. 
and advance together. And we need to do this. So I hope you've been inspired today. I hope we've helped you today. Reach out to us. If you want more help, if you want a team of the best performing team in the world, reach out to us and we would be happy to help you and help you to get your story and your mission and your vision written for the world. And we love you and we appreciate you. Go and do, go practice your thought command. Go share your story. Thank you, Mark, for joining me today. I appreciate you and I love you. And I love, we love all of you out there. So go write your story and we'll see you next time. Have an amazing, amazing day.